Amy Smith, welcome. Amy is the Vice President of Recovery Programs for, the Mental, Health, for Mental Health America of Colorado and is the Director of Wellness and Education Coalition and Advocacy Network of Colorado, which acts as a consumer network and conducts the Colorado Leadership Academy, a week-long advocacy training for consumers. Ms. Smith has been with We Can since its inception in 2003. Welcome, Ms. Smith. It is great to have you with us. Chairman Anders, Ranking Member Klein, and distinguished members of the committee, thank you very much, very, very much for this opportunity to tell my story. My name is Amy Smith, and I have lived my life with a serious psychiatric disorder. Most of my life was spent in a murky, confusing ocean of extreme emotions. I cycled in and out of mental hospitals, jail, and rather desperate attempts to lead a so-called life. Looking back on my childhood, I realized that I was already under the influence of mental illness. I remember a time when I was afraid to leave my bed in the morning to go to school because I was convinced there was an evil woman clad in flowing black robes and riding a black horse right outside my door that was going to get me. I did not relate to my peers, and I led a very lonely young life. As a young adult, my disorder, schizoaffective disorder, really blossomed. I had no idea what was happening to me as I became increasingly out of touch with reality and began a dark descent into profound depression. I quickly discovered that drugs and alcohol alleviated some of my symptoms. My solution to my difficulties was to stay high and drunk all the time from the moment I woke up in the morning until I fell asleep at night. I found it increasingly difficult to attend my college classes and consequently lost my grants, scholarships, and loans. I became a drug dealer to support myself, and after I was arrested, I became homeless for the first time, living in an abandoned trailer that had no doors or windows in the middle of a large field. As homeless shelters went, it was pretty luxurious. I was able to keep a small amount of possessions, and I didn't have to worry about other homeless people stealing my stuff or attacking me. One of the characteristics of severe mental illness is it's a very cyclical disorder, and I would experience brief windows of lucidity and clarity from time to time. When I was a young person, when that happened, I would experience momentous surges of hope, and thinking that all the darkness was lifted at last, I would craft extravagant plans for my life, not realizing that my schemes were grandiose and unachievable. As I became a more seasoned player in life, I would give myself over to my addictions in these times and just quit trying. The worst product of a severe mental illness, in my opinion, is a debilitating loneliness. Even as a very young child, I could not connect with the people around me, and it only got worse as I aged. I tried and tried to build a network of people around me to no avail. I remember one time I was attending a potluck and I had managed to wear some reasonable clothes and I brought a dish to share. I was so proud of myself. I was in this crowded room filled with prospective friends and I went to sit on the couch with a plate of food. As I was sitting down, I glanced down at the couch and saw that it was covered with hundreds of naked, squirming babies. I made a horrible sound and leapt up, my food flying. It was humiliating beyond belief, but fairly typical of my stabs at making friendships. I did, however, manage to have a child in an attempt to build a family around me. As life went on, my condition became worse and worse. I clearly looked like someone to avoid at all costs. I had dreams about what to wear, and if I didn't have a dream, I would wear the same outlandish outfits over and over again, sometimes for weeks at a time. So I had hygiene issues. I would either shuffle or stride up and down the street, depending on my mood, muttering to myself and occasionally verbally attacking passers-by. My son, who turned out to be a person with psychiatric disorder himself, was living in mental hospitals and residential treatment centers. I could not keep him safe and lost partial custody of him to social services. My situation was pretty bleak. Finally, I had just had enough. I made a plan to kill both myself and my son. Fortunately, I told someone of my plan, and I was whisked away to a community mental health hospital. As I was on Medicaid, I entered into the Colorado community mental health system and immediately started receiving excellent care. I was determined to turn my life around. Working with my doctors and therapists, I started taking care of myself, sleeping appropriately, and eating decent food. It took a long time, but we found a cocktail of psychotropic medications that worked for me, alleviating my symptoms with very few side effects. I regained full custody of my son and started working. Today, I am a vice president at Mental Health America of Colorado. 
As happy as I am today, I'm heartbroken that 45 years of my life were lost. The jobs I managed to hold down had no mental health insurance and certainly no substance abuse care available. I had to go on welfare to get the care I needed. Things that people take for granted, like getting married, holding down a real job, driving a car, volunteering in the community, were beyond me most of my life. I was nothing but a drain on society. Today I am a tax-paying citizen with private insurance. I am no longer ashamed to be the person who I am. We are very lucky in Colorado because we just passed the Mental Health and Addiction Parity Bill. You have the same opportunity to do the same here so people's lives are not wasted as mine was. Thank you.